morning and welcome to the Episcopal Church of Leeds Parish on this Sunday, August 22nd, the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Our worship today is Holy Eucharist Rite 2 with music. Please do participate as fully as you are able. Let's get a photo. <coughs>
A reading from the book of Joshua. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, servant girls. She calls them from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside your maturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us join together in praying the appointed verses of Psalm 34 responsibly by that verse. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to root out the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry, and the Lord hears them, and delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and it will save those whose spirits are crushed. Many are the troubles of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver him out of them all. He will keep safe all his bones. Not, Not one of them shall be broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. And those who hate the righteous will be punished. The Lord ransoms the life of his servants. And none will be punished who trust in him. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God, so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand from. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, Put on whatever you will make ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in that spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. The word of the Lord. Uh, our sequence then is in 440. In 440, blessed Jesus at thy word.
saith, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. When many of his disciples heard it, they said, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus, being aware that his disciples were complaining about it, said to them, Does this offend you? Then what if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life. The flesh is useless. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But among you there are some who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the first who were the ones that did not believe, and who was the one that would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you, that no one can come to me unless it is granted by the Father. Because of this, many of his disciples turned back and no longer went about with him. So Jesus asked the twelve, Do you also wish to go away? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and know that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. And then Paul goes on to talk about these 
various things we might do well to put on, or at least to try on. Put a belt of truth about your waist. The waist is at our center. What if truth were really at the center of all we are and all that we do? There would be no fudging, no little white lies. Instead, I guess we'd keep silent rather than telling a lie. Put on a breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate would cover the heart. Paul imagines our hearts to be covered with righteousness. Righteousness comes from the old English word right wise, to be both virtuous and wise, to be right wise, to live from the heart, remembering that the heart and the head are inseparable. Paul says that for shoes, whatever makes us ready to proclaim a gospel of peace will do. He's talking about our having a good, a good foundation, a foundation that allows for peace, for us to talk about peace, to work for peace among other people, and to encourage peace in what we say, and where we go, and in what we do. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. Faith itself, Paul says, is like a shield protects us from all kinds of things. Even if our faith is weak, it's a shield. Even if our faith is, is confused or it's conflicted, when arrows from the evil one come toward us. For most of his life, the late Senator John McCain was a faithful Episcopalian. He knew so much of the Book of Common Prayer by heart that when he was captured as a prisoner of war, he could recite whole sections, psalms and prayers. He could lead religious services in prison that help sustain himself and help sustain others. God gives us a helping hand and our shield of faith is enough. Whatever faith we have is enough. And God works with that and God honors that. Any faith, any faith at all, becomes what Paul so dramatically puts as the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. A helmet of salvation and a sword of the Spirit might sound vague, like they are accessories that we really don't need, except that the sword of the Spirit is Holy Scripture. And Holy Scripture is the way in which we come to understand salvation. And salvation being God's plan from the beginning of time to save humankind from itself. So here the Apostle Paul gives us an inventory of a kind of holy closet. The things we can use to protect us, to strengthen us, to keep us strong and faithful against any foe. In the Middle Ages, Dame Julian of Norwich wrote the best-known surviving book in the English language written by a mystic, Revelations of Divine Love, the first book written in English by a known woman author. Dame Julian had a vision of God, and in reflecting upon it, she writes, God is our clothing who wraps and enfolds us for love embraces us, and shelters us, surrounds us for his love, which is so tender that he may never deserve us. Clothes do perhaps make the person, but not the physical clothes. It's the spiritual ones that count. And the best thing is we don't have to worry about back to school sales or being up on the new fall fashions. God provides us with the means to be clothed exactly what we need. In today's gospel text from John, the disciples say to Jesus, this teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? But Jesus suggests that they clothe themselves in his spirit, in his light, in his love. God gives us armor, a belt of truth, a breastplate of righteousness, peacemaking shoes, a shield of faith, a 
helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. All of them are custom tailored to be exactly what you and I need. God doesn't give us a size that's too big or too small, but always knows what will be right. It is for us to step into that which God provides. As Dame Julian said, God himself is our clothing. He wraps and enfolds us for love. Let us pray. 
pray for our own needs and those of others. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Kneeling or standing, let us confess our sins against God. Jesus, 
witnessing to and following in your wondrous way of love. Amen. 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 Turn to your views. Thank you.
Uh, very special day. We are going to dedicate a new set of red vestments and hangings uh, given by Melinda Neese in memory of her late husband, Don. So if you want to be here for the dedication of those vestments, and it's homecoming. Now, we are worshiping at 9.30, so when we do homecoming, it's going to be, have a little bit more of a brunch feel. But do please join us for homecoming. And uh, last but certainly not least, currently we are planning to resume two Sunday services, 8 and 10.30, on October 3rd. Now, I say that letting you know that I look at the health markers every day. If it is not safe for us to gather, uh, in that way, then we will continue with 930, or if markers change and we cannot gather inside this church building, I reserve the Leeds Road Town Park through October. So we will worship one way or another, but it is very important that we stay safe um, out of our love and concern for our neighbors. Um, what was my other announcement? Uh, Sunday school began. Also. What's that? Rhonda? Oh yes, Sunday school starts that day. Thank you. And uh, the nursery has been open. Right since August 8th, I think. Karina is back in the nursery, so we're, we're, we're getting back together, but it is important that um, we be smart during this pandemic, which seems to take twists and turns along the way each and every day. So I so appreciate your faithfulness in worship and your faithfulness in giving. And on that note, Gary Pearson is leading our annual giving um, committee this year. Uh, we are not passing the plate, so please do make sure to leave your offering or your pledge as you exit the church. And Gary and his team will be meeting today to plan a annual giving for the fall. And a nice date is the last date is November 14th, Sunday, November 14th. We're going to have harvest worship at the orchard, okay, like we did two years ago. So please make sure to put that on your calendar. Are you going to Sorry? Are you talking about the Venus thing or no? Yeah. Lorena. No, not today. Oh, Lorena. Oh, thank you. Yes, excuse me. No, so here's the thing. Your stuff sometimes go in my other folder, and so I find it later. So if it happens for anybody else, they might want to know to say that. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Lorena celebrates on September 9th 20 years. 20 years of ministry here at Leeds Church. So um, we are going to have a catered meal at Burton Park on Thursday, September 9th at 5.30. Um, Karina is going to prepare a Peruvian dessert for everybody. Uh, and uh, we will celebrate her ministry then and there. So uh, that committee is meeting on the 29th after worship. We're going to decide, are there RSVPs? Are we making phone calls? But at the very least, just put that, that date in your calendar, uh, September 9th and be prepared to celebrate Lorena's extraordinary ministry among us. Thank you, Kenora. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, offering the sacrifice of your life.
forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
awakening of us to the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us of these holy mysteries, that we are only members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, this is about to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Live without fear. Your Creator has made you holy, has always protected you, and loves you as a mother. Go in peace to follow the good road, and may God's blessing be with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 530, Spread, O oh, Spread, Thou Mighty Word. 